to take you back, everybody knows that through our advertisement, and if you've been associated with us in the last few years, you all realize that we're the only ones that have ever had uh, credentials that have been certified from the United States Defense Department. In 1988-89, this all first started when I was tasked to analyze and set up a type of fighting system that would beat anything in the world. Now, when we say beat, it doesn't mean that I'm going to outpoint somebody or I'm going to win a champion. I'm going to be world champion. What it simply meant is it's pure, down and dirty survival fighting. Can we train men to go into combat and beat people who have hours and hours, hundreds of hours, 10 years worth of martial arts under their belt? Can we, within a very short period of time, teach men how to take other people's lives using some type of fighting system. Well, the key word here is system. Yes, you can if you use science, and that's what we're going to explain here. That's what we have up on the board is some bits of science that you're going to use to conquer uh, the, the ground, all right? If you're a wrestler or a grappler or a judo, a master or a teacher, participate in the sports like Tim explained, this is going to make you even better. It's going to make you undefeatable. How is that going to do that? Well, the first thing it's going to do, it's going to do what got me into the military in the first place. One of the main reasons, not the first, but the main reason when it comes to ground is how could scars, since you haven't really seen ground fighting from scars, how could it beat the judo, the judo, the jujitsu, the gracies, and all these other people? Well, we don't necessarily beat people. We just simply show them the pure logic concept of science, and that alone opens your eyes to show you patterns of movement that are undefeatable. That's how we do it. Okay, we don't create champions, we create science. We let individuals like you out there participate any way you want with it, but we're going to give you the whole tool to go all the way from non-lethal to lethal use of force. I hold nothing back. Right? One of the main reasons it the judo or wrestling has never been uh, qualified as a military style of fighting anywhere in the world is because of this central nervous system. When you wrestle or come into this position and put your head down in front of somebody and crab like you do when you're coming in and shooting in on people, it's fine for competition because no one out there is going to break your back or paralyze you paralyze your arms or your legs for life. No one's going to do that because it's against the law, regardless of what they want to say, right? But in combat, there is no law other than the law of survival. So the first thing I noticed when people were learning these systems was, hey, I don't know about you, but I don't want to give my central nervous system to anybody, regardless of whether it's just a street fight or I'm fighting for my life. And the, once I showed the military the science behind it, which we're about ready to give to you, they agree too. Therefore, they do not have that as their official system. They did not approve that as full combat capable. Right? Do we, as scars, use chokeouts? Yes. Do we throw people on the ground? Yes. Do we get on the ground? Yes. We just utilize it a much different. We do it very quickly, and we do not want to stay down there. Because one of the other problems, before we get into the the grappling concept of countering, you have to understand, uh, in a task of working with military, the men that go on the ground in a multi-fight or overrun situation are the men that normally die because they stay there and they get kicked to death or punched to death or someone bludgeons them with a shovel. Now, we've just started tasking ourselves with correction uh, on the law enforcement uh, side, correction institutions where you go into a riot situation and officers are getting trained in this ground stuff. And what we're seeing now is when we look at it, we see these officers going to the ground, going to wrestle this guy down, and you know, dog got it, you know, those, those uh, inmates just didn't hear that it's not okay to kick a guy in the head while he's got a hold of somebody else. And that officer ends up getting kicked to death or beaten to death because he went to the ground to lay some kind of submission hold on them. Unfortunately, like I say, I don't deal in the sport world. I deal in the reality of life and death and people trying to take other people's lives in high-risk areas. And one of the main reasons I brought scars to the public 
in the form that we're doing is trying to protect you out there from the type of hype or misleading concepts of, hey, go to the ground, you can beat anybody. No, that's not true. It's proven on video. It's proven all the time. If I've got six guys going to take one guy to the ground, we're all six on one side, sure, that's going to work just like the cops. But if I'm one guy and I'm going to fight six, even if I just have to get out of the way, what's going to happen is I'm going to go to the ground and I'm going to get my face kicked in, somebody's going to stomp on the back of my neck, on the center of my back, and I'm going to be paralyzed for the rest of life. So you just kind of think about that out there if you really want to get into this wrestling stuff. Okay? If you're going to wrestle in competition, get the rules, go for it. But if you're going to get out in the street, you better learn what we're about to tell you, because I want to save your life.